Hello and welcome back. So this is um, the third video I'm recording and this one is for showing you how to set up a parametric model and how to execute all these parametric runs on pollination in one go. Uh, I assume you have watched the first video about like how to set up a model because I'm not going to go through all those details and I'm going to show you like first the whole grasshopper script and then like I'll build it uh, from here from the uh, pollination side uh, or rebuild it so you see the process so the model here is a room um, it's like I create a box typical ladybug tools processes to create the model there are two uh, inputs that we have here uh, so the fragment B we can call it shape depth so it's more readable so there is one is shade depth so you can see it changes the depth of the shading and there is another one for shade count which changes the number of shades here in the model so actually I can probably do this so you can see it better so yep that was the this and this is the one um, and what we are measuring right now in this case again will be daylight factor but as I said it can be any recipe again I use daylight factor because it's quick enough and it's not like I don't have to talk about the recipe for like five minutes I'm like what is it um, you see here there will be a user inputs this time because there are inputs that we want to keep track for shade depth and shade count I'll talk about that I'm also going to keep track of shade area so if you have a goal you want to see like how much material uh, you're using for shading which can be correlated to the cost uh, also the only real difference is now between creating a run and executing it as a job I used a record component and this is like a grasshopper data recorder right so I just changed the name to record them and then submit them all together in one and that's basically it so the difference between a parametric run and a single run or like I said parametric but it's just like multiple runs and a single run if you have different design options it just create the runs record them and then run them all together why do you want to do that because when you run them together you can now run queries or ask questions about all the runs in relation to each other so you can see where we're going with this, this is basically we want to have like a design uh, explorer kind of interface generated after you run all these studies and I know some people about like what about optimization what about optimization that's a different video uh, and no we don't support optimization with Galapagos because every single Galapagos like needs every iteration to be calculated at a time but there should be solutions we'll talk about that later so let's just focus on the task in hand which is setting up a parametric study and run it on, on pollination so here you go again like if you want to see it as an advanced user and just go your way and do your stuff here is like the process okay now I'm going to save this file actually let me just delete everything I'm not saving anything delete this thing too so let's just start here so all I have is this model um, that is a parametric model for room I think it's like the size is kind of like it can be like a classroom uh, and it's like a sided uh, daily space which is like a very typical question so you want to see the effect of shading size and number of them on daylight factor inside the space uh, let's set up the execution on, on pollination going back here what was the step the first step you need to load the recipe here get a recipe and I'm going to run this one under my own demo projects uh, not not ladybug tools NREL or maybe ladybug tools NREL so like more people can see it I think like this thing is okay let me log in again it should be logged in I don't know what so if I go back to browse I see okay now I see my project I go to ladybug tools demo for all the demos and I have access to different recipes here again I said like I'll just go for daylight factor and you can see recipes are versioned so you can use a specific version of a recipe if you want 
I'll show you two different ways. So uh, by by default, when you see star, it means like you have access to all the versions, and by default, it it loads the latest version. So I do this. So this is version 057. For some reason, if I wanted to do an older version like 031, I can go and select 031, and you see like this is a this is how the recipe has become what what it is. And you can on the web interface, you can see like all the iterations. But okay, I don't want that, and I want latest. Do we support latest here? Look at us. Yes, we do. So you just write latest and it does the latest version for you. Okay, inputs again is model. Uh, the difference, as I said, is now we want to record it. So every time that I create a run, I want it to be recorded so I can just connect them all as, as a single job. I'm going to use the recorder component here. So now if I change those sliders, You will see that it records it as a new one. And now I did extra. It's a great job by me. But yeah, you get the concept. So to automate this process, I'm going to use the fly component. I'm going to remove this here. And I use fly, which comes with Ladybug Tools Legacy. You can use uh, Colibri, uh, which comes with uh, TT Toolbox. They're basically similar uh, in what we want here is just to animate through these sliders. If you have one slider, you can right click and, and animate that too. Okay, so toggle. And now you know if I run this, it says like there are six options, yes. So all the options are created. Let's go here and all the options are recorded here. Let's check, so we have, interesting, we have one extra, so let me redo this. And this is why we do stuff like this. So you can see through the process and one of them are, are duplicated. And this is actually a great case. I have no idea, right? Why? Because all the complexity of the parametric run is like all the shade, number of shades and uh, the depths, they are actually hidden in this model. I don't know what's the value for each model unless I change the name every time for the model, which I do actually here, but again, can I see it here? Uh, no, I can't because this is the parameters. So this will be an issue when we go on the web interface too, right? When you run it, you have no idea what's what. So let me maximize this. And that's exactly why we added this user input. So user inputs allows you to add inputs that are not part of the inputs recipe. So you probably know there should be already a component with the same name, which is and I can customize this and add the inputs that I want. So the first one that I want is shape depths. And the next one I want is shade count. If you want to create a unique ID based on depths and count like this one and call it like ID or something, you can totally do that. Yeah, my daughter is not happy right now. I pause the video and I'll come back. Okay, so the issue is resolved. Let's continue. So I the next thing that I want is area. Maybe I should call it shade area. So it's clear. This is the area. Do we want to keep track of anything else. I can't really think of any for now. So I'll just connect this user inputs here. It of course records another one. So now let's go ahead and do, do this again. And this time because this we have this user inputs, I should be able to see like which one is duplicated and remove that. I thought this was a bug that is resolved, but it's not apparently. Okay, let's do it again. Yes. Last one is false. Uh, you know, it creates seven of them, but you can see this one is zero, one, and three, which is the last one, which is the same as the first one, zero, one, and three. What I'm going to do, and I guess there's a way like to just remove it from this, I guess, from the UI, I don't know. 
So let's just remove it by index. Again, if you have a better way of like creating this runs and record them, that's totally fine. Uh, the reason I'm using it like this, I just wanted to show you like why we broke this down into steps. So you can check the inputs that you want to submit for the parametric runs. And it can be like hundreds of them, like as many as you want. And, and as you will see, because they run in parallel, like adding more doesn't add that much time, extra time to the whole overrun. Okay, now that we have the list, remember the process was use this guy, do the run. Um, we can name the whole job. Again, like this is every single run is here, right? Oh, we can actually name them. Let's do that. Let me just create a name for each run. And the name can be disjoint uh, depth whatever here. So, okay, now I have a name. I have to re-record this stuff because I have the new one. Here you go. Oh, oh no, I'm, I'm looking to the output of this. I was just, oh, it just got fixed. It didn't. So, okay, these are the six runs that I have. Now there should be a name to as one of the inputs. Sensor can name is here. Okay, looks great. Uh, I can name the whole job that I'm trying to run as uh, I can name it parametric run for classroom. Actor run for a classroom. I can add more de description here, which will show up in the web UI, and later you can just use it to just see what was what. But I'm not going to do it now. And for subfolder, again, I think just to be clean, and this is a demo project, so we use it for almost everything. So I just call it classroom data factor. This subfolder. Okay, six job, everything. The rest is just the same as what we did for a single run. I just do yes. It's a start set, it just prepares the stuff, I start running. Once it's created, the component goes back to normal and it gives me one ID for the job. But the difference is now the job has six different runs. So let's go and see it. Uh, I use the same component, connect it here. You can see here it says running zero of six are, are are ready. If you are not patient or you have nothing else to do, then you can go and watch them. But I think in reality, a lot of time you have other stuff to do. And that's why it's async and like it doesn't block anything and you can go do your stuff. You don't even have to connect this. You know, you can and you can have a notification system and we will have a better notification system in the future, of course. But you can right click here for now and see the job on Pollination Cloud. And here is, or here are the six different jobs. You see the extra inputs are the user inputs that I put in. That's name, shade area, shade count, shade depth. These are the recipe inputs. Uh, and there are no outputs because the jobs are still running, uh, or the job is still running. And this time runs are like six are running. As they are get, getting done, you will see like 101 succeed or fail or whatever happens uh, to these runs. Uh, let's go, just go watch one of them. That's this one. Again, I can go to debug and see where the run is. So this is a cleaner one. It's actually almost done. So it merged the results. It's probably zipping the stuff. And this is an opportunity for me to show like how this is useful. So this is every step of the process for that recipe. You can click on it. This is for more advanced users. And you can see exactly the command that has been executed. The inputs the outputs and the, if there is any log. This is useful for two reasons. One is for educating people in your company, educating yourself, understanding what are you using. So it's not like a black box of like, oh, I ran this thing, I have no idea how it was created. The other thing is for debugging. If you write your own recipe or if you get a new recipe or something fails, this is the way to debug it. You can come in every step and see which is, I mean, this one, because everything was successful, everything is great. You will get a red one. You can click on it. You can see the command. You can try to get the files and try to debug the whole process. So this is something cool, I think, like that you can see. I go back to the job here and it should be 
finished, six succeeded. As you can see, each one like took between 110 to 126, depending on like how long did it take to for the job to be scheduled. But the whole thing ran like 128, and that's like the power of this platform. If you have like hundreds of jobs, daylight factor, it should still take one minute, 28 seconds, one minute, 30 seconds. Uh, and that's how things can scale up pretty well. So, okay, now that this is done, let's go back to Grasshopper and try to get the results. Again, the same process as we had with the difference here that now this index is meaningful. So by default, I get the first run out of that six, but I can bring a slider and I can go, so this is the first one, the second one, the third one, and all this. And then if this is connected to the whole data visualization that we built earlier, then uh, you can just see the result live as we go through this options. I'm going to pause the video so I don't, I already showed like how to do the result visualization and then copy paste the stuff and then come back and then we just do like some result visualization happiness. Okay, so I'm back. I copy pasted the visualization that we had from another file and you, it even comes with this pollination versus ladybug tools thing. And then let me copy paste this here too. So yep, this was ladybug tools from here to our pollination. Uh, before I get everything fixed, I wanted to show you this use the opportunity. So I connected to the same run and I was expecting that everything worked, but then this turns red. If you check here, it basically says number of asset has changed. This basically means like this, the file that I had was using another recipe or a different version. Uh, sometimes it just gives you an error because they're not the same thing. So what you can do is just like match assets. And when you do match asset, oh, this one was real. So because the other one, I didn't have all the extra inputs for this one, I had it. And that's why it turned red. Again, if you see it, don't freak out. You just right click match asset and it just matches with all the asset that you have from this run. Uh, the rest are, I should already have some result visualization showing up in my Rhino. So here we go. Cool. Now what I can do, I can go here and like go through this a slider and you can see the effect of, uh, yep, larger shade, darker space. And again, this is not, this is not here. We don't want to make design decisions. I'm focusing on the workflow of like how pollination works. And keep in mind, this thing doesn't need to be in the same file, right? I can basically um, get this ID from here or like double click and load the ID from the, from this component as I did in the other, um, other video tutorial. And here we go. So it's just, it can happen totally disconnected in a different file. So all this result visualization thing. Why is it important? Because right now, what we have on, on pollination is this. It shows you all this stuff. You have all the models. Even you can visualize all these models if you click. But it's not something that you can take it and put it in Design Explorer, that CSV file that you need, right? To just visualize it right away. Will it be available soon? Yes. Is it available now? No. So to get around that for now, one of the things that you can do, you can basically take all those studies that you ran and then bring it here and connect Colibri or whatever use you, tool you use to generate Design Explorer inputs and go through all the results, capture the images in a folder. And the thing is, because you already ran all the studies, the results are available live. So you can just get it, make all those stuff, and you can do all the other cool stuff that you want to do. So just like to wrap up this, what I can do, I can just fly. Again, I connect it here. Toggle. Connect it here. And then I can use capture screen or something, for example, here, if I wanted to capture a screen, but I'm not going to do that. So let's just go through the result and see them just because it's cool. Oh, interesting. It didn't really show them as good as I wanted. So let me go like this, but it did all the thing. It's just like it didn't re-render the view for you. So yeah, one, two, three, four, and five. 
So if you are not an advanced Grasshopper user and like, oh, I have to do it manually, you don't have to. Like the thing happened, it just didn't render the viewport. If I had the capture screen component at the end, it would have just generated the image like uh, how Colibri does it. Okay, um, that should be it uh, for the videos that can get you started with the whole process. Uh, let us know if you have any questions on this course. If you don't have access to Pollination yet, it's early access. We will get you on board. Just go through the official process. We see everyone there. We have like more than 500 companies and people are still waiting and we're expanding the process. But don't email me directly. It's not going to put you in front of the line. We'll get to you though. Thank you and take care.